Hello all, it's James Johnson, a.k.a. Sulphur Blade, and I am here in the world of Seren Fate, which is... Well, it's a world that can be very downright... Uh, head-bashingly... Um... Not very... Uh... What's the word I'm looking for? Nothing just seems to make sense. Um, everything... The controls, the UI... The game pacing, uh, much about this game just is out of left field. And so with that, I am making this video for the purposes of helping you, the player, actually get somewhere in the game. This is not going to, this is going to be basically a comprehensive how to start the game, how to plant a crop, how to dig something, how to use spells, how to get out of the house, how to use your UI, how to save the game, um, how to fish, how to um, create a birdhouse, how to um, make birds stop eating your, your seeds video. So that that's basically what this video is going to cover, plus a few tips and tricks on the way. This is not going to be a, a, a very in-depth video. This is just going to be me making a maybe a, a relatively short, probably like an hour-long video on how to actually play this game. So we're gonna we're gonna start by starting a new game. I'm going to press X to skip because I don't want to watch that crap. Um, and here we are. So to move around, WASD, press shift. Um, now, when you close that dialog, you're taken straight into the mirror. So you don't even get to attempt to try to move around. Just go with it. Um, then basically these options, you're talking to a mirror. Um, this this is kind of pointless dialogue that doesn't matter here. Whatever you say, usually the same things are said. Um, bad news, sure. Uh, how about George? We'll go with George this time. What's your save file? George. How are you feeling? Okay. In this, th this question does actually matter because I believe this system is linked to a spell. And I'm going to suggest ta taking like a sapling. And I believe like a sapling will allow you to uh, get the mining spell early maybe. Okay, purple. I'm not sure about that though. But I know that... Uh, I'm pretty sure that questionnaire is linked to some sort of sudden attunement to nature. So yeah, feeling like a, a sapling gives you an attunement to nature. And you learn the spell would cut. So Really, none of these uh, appearances matter because you're a female character. Even if you make your character look like a male, you're still a female. Um, we'll go with this hair color and we'll go with, I don't know, like a, a black. Um, later on, long in dialogue, you know, you're, you're a witch, and you're not a warlock. So, there are three items you need to pick up in this house in order to escape it. And how you pick something up, if you weren't paying attention to the tutorial, and you just flew through the tutorial, like I just did, which you very well might do, because if you watch that first screen, where it, it tells you to hit X to skip, and then you have to press E for every dialogue option, 
by the time you get to the point to where the tutorial matters, you've given up on reading the tutorial. So here you press E. Pre pressing E is what you do to pick anything up. <clears throat> um, I think there's something to pick up here, is it? Yeah, your notebook. So the map, the notebook, and then the thing up here in the uh, this, the witchery decks. You need these three items in order to leave the house. If you don't get these three items, you won't be able to leave the house. And you press E to pick those items up. So that's step one of the tutorial. And believe it or not, getting out of the house has been issues for people. Um, this is a uh, hut, brings back memories. I do apologize, not to fret. Now, what interests you the most? So, picking this will determine what starting item you start with. Uh, witchery will give you some magic wand that if you hold it in your hand uh, you might get some mana back. Um, gardening will get you a magic watering can that will uh, water your crops. Um, chimera, I'm not sure what Chimera does. Fishing pole I assume gives you a fishing pole but I haven't found that out for sure. Um uh, mining, again, not sure what mining does either, but what I recommend is to go with gardening because I think the the uh, magic watering can, so this is a watering can that never runs out of water, is probably the most useful of the items you can get here. Um, so that's why I go with gardening. All right, excellent. Take this magic trinket. Next up uh, is a tradition of new witches to be bonded with a familiar. Today I've brought three lovelies. Uh, take your time to feel which one you're drawn to. So it's not going to show you what they are, right? You have to just be lucky and, and guess the one that you're going to want. So this one is a little red mushroom toadstool dude. This one is kind of like a, a flying bat thing. And then this one is like a little green cactus in a pot type thing. Um, the toadstool is terrible. It's, it's, it, it has a very hard time killing things. As it's probably the worst fighter of the group right off the bat. The Chimera, um, which is this, not Chimera, but all of these are Chimera. The bat-like thing here... Um, it kills things pretty well, but sometimes it needs to two-shot them. Um, and this uh, green cactus dude in the planter, uh, he pretty much one-shots things, or at least slimes, which is about all that I've really fought to this date, to be honest. <coughs> so I would recommend the Caterpoke of these three, based off of mob of, of slime killing performance that is so the caterpoke is called the chimera blah 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 yes yes thank you thank you um no i don't want to hear more nope go away yes i see busy as bee if you find some new species be sure to bring them until next time young witch toodles yes thank you all right So remember how uh, Abigail in Stardew Valley had a video game you would play with her? And it, it, was, it was that whole game inside of a game, Inception-like experience. Well, you can do that here. You have a video game inside of a video game. So if you want to see that, go ahead. Um, press I to open up your inventory. At this time, you're going to want to equip the things you were given. So you have a magic watering can. This goes in your hand. When it's in your hand, you can water dry dirt just automatically it just happens um, and we'll go over that in a little bit and then you need to put your caterpoke into uh, this spot here or else you won't have your chimera it won't be around it won't be following you around it won't be able to help you you need to put it here in this inventory slot and that's that's what you do there so now you've got your watering can and you've got your chimera this 
over here, okay, um, this is Ruby. If you go to uh, across the bridge, Ruby is going to talk to you. And Ruby is going to tell you, I'm a blacksmith from the town, but I like to help the head witch, Coco, out with new witches. I sent you a letter. Check your letter box, and we'll get started with some introductory witchery. Ruby, I think you're lucky to get this area instead of a normal apprentice. But look at all the smithing and gardening you could do. I left you that workbench and some other bits and bobs. All right, then. See you later in town. Oh, and I'd be careful with the statue over there. It looks like at night it might eat items you give it. Okay, statue over there. That statue over there that you're being told to be careful about? That statue over there that looks like it might eat items at night that you give it? Is where you save the game. Yes, I played four or five hours of this game completely avoiding that statue because the game warned me about that statue and then when I went to log off I had no idea how to save and I certainly wasn't gonna go stand on this on the statue that eats things to figure out how to save my game alright so she's gone now you can move see this this bird like thing on a pole is actually a bird-like thing standing on a mailbox. You, you won't be able to understand that until you actually talk to the mailbox to get the mail because the bird-like thing is signifying you have mail. Hello, my name is Ruby. I'm the blacksmith in Midtown, but I'll be overseeing some of your beginning witchery. Let's start with some gathering. Try to collect four timber. All right. And now bird-like thing gone, now it looks like a mailbox. Okay. Um, these things here, uh, you'll see random scenery items. If you press E on them, you can pick them up. I got honey and I got flower petals. Flower petals are important. I will explain to you why flower petals are important. And if you press, again, E on a lot of random things, you will get stuff like more flower petals, some timber. Um, now, the game wants me to chop some wood, so I'm going to do that here. In order to chop wood, you need to know the spell to chop wood. And we do know the spell to chop wood because it was given to us at the beginning of the game. But at this point, you're like... Well, I don't know what the spell is, and you're right, you don't know what the spell is. You need to press your middle mouse button to bring up this this uh, radial menu. And now from the radial menu, go to skill, or no, not skill, go to note, and click on spell. And you will see that wood cutting requires green, red, and this last item might be hard to see, but it's supposed to be a moon. So green, red, moon. So then you select green, you select red, you select moon, and now you have the woodcut spell. Now, if you click on the base of a tree, a little axe will go there, and it'll start to cut down the tree over time. It's not going to be very fast. And you can do that to a second tree. See how each time it's used one of my eight mana? You could click several times on the same tree and get a bunch of axes, but that's just going to basically waste your mana. If you click on three trees, you could be cutting three trees down at the same time instead of doing this. You could put more than one axe on the same tree. And more than one axe on the same tree will cut it down really fast, as you can see. But it's a waste of your mana. And I'm doing this just for this demonstration purpose to show you the difference between using one mana on a tree and using a lot of mana on a tree. Using a lot of mana on a tree obviously cuts it down faster. But you're still getting the same amount of stuff from the tree as if you would have used 
one mana. Okay, task complete. Gather timber. Gain 25 harvest XP. Now, what you will know is um, these one axes on these two trees will not completely cut down the tree. They will run out of juice before they cut out cut down the tree. So you could probably toss two axes on a tree and be mana efficient. I think that will change in time as you level up and your skills get stronger. All right, now you might be wondering, what was I supposed to do? I don't remember what I was supposed to do. Um, so if you go to your notes, there isn't, oh, you can go back to the, you can go back to the mailbox to figure out what you were tasked to do, I believe. The letterbox is empty. Okay, well, yeah. Um, oh, I was going to show you guys next the importance of these. So flower petals. I'm going to, I'm going to run around, um, pick up some of these leaf piles and get me some more flower petals. That was gold crumble. Those flowers actually gave me gold, if you can believe that or not. And this type of rock has a chance of giving you something more than just rock. It has the chance of giving you what's called a rune. And in this instance, it was a null rune. Um, understand runes are valuable. Why they're valuable? I'm not sure. They're harder to acquire, therefore they're worth more money. Alright, so I've gathered enough of this random stuff now to show you what the flower petals do. So let's go ahead and get back to what we were doing here. Okay. So we've got new mail. Let's see how you are doing with spells. Try to cut down a tree by combining the runes Nature, Sun, Moon in your spell bar. The spell bar is to the left of your hot bar. Uh, slots. Some trees require high level. Try to cast on a few trees. All right. So it remembered that I already cut down this uh, tree and just rewarded me, I believe, the XP for doing that mission. But we're going to continue on with that mission. If you have this up like it is now, you can just click here and it'll bring up the spell thing. And we will finish cutting down these two trees. Now, as you can see, I'm out of mana. But that's not a big deal. Because those flower petals I was telling you about, if you hit space bar while you have them selected, they will give you a mana back. So, you are not necessarily out of mana unless you're out of flower petals. This is good to know. Oops. So now while those two trees cut down, we will harvest us some dirt. Wait, do I have the dirt spell? Oh, I don't have the dirt spell because I probably didn't grab it out of the chest here. All right, so this is a spell tomb, and this is your inventory. This 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 big area here is your inventory. You could take said spell tomb and put it into your inventory, and you, they evidently starts you with some dry soil and a seed pouch, which is signifying the game is signifying to you to go ahead and start planting, right? You so don't want to do that, because you are not ready to plant. Trust me. So, now if we get over here, so the game is trying to help you, say press spacebar to activate this hot slot to learn this book. 
So I've learned the book, and I now have the mining skill. <coughs> so now I can cast the mining spell, which was uh, Red Red Moon. And with the mining spell, I can go over here to that guy. So to mine something, it takes two mana. So it's a, it's a more expensive spell to cast. But it actually goes a little faster. Which we reach level two, yay. <clears throat> All right, and we have the whole trees being cut down over here. And we have a new mail coming in from Ruby. Uh, next up, let's have you do some crafting. Try mining or gathering enough stone to craft a furnace at the workbench. Remember, don't let the flowers stand around. You want those flower petals. So grab those flowers whenever you see them. Okay, so we, we need to get more stone. So let's, let's find a spot where there's several stones next to each other like this neighborhood here and remember you can just click on this to get your spell activated and there we're going to use all eight mana um, you're going to notice that dirt stones like these go a lot faster than the bigger stones go but the dirt stones give you dry dirt which you can plant on And they also will give you coal. See how I got some coal here? With that coal, I can use, I can put that into the furnace we're going to be building to uh, to smelt copper into a bar. All right, so you will your your magical things will continue to do their thing while you sleep. You don't have to you don't have to be awake for your magic to harvest stuff. So when it gets dark, I do recommend sleeping because sleeping will regenerate your magic without having to use flower petals. And Flower, you will run out of flower petals at some point, so, you know, consider them a precious commodity. I don't know why the game does this. Um, I'm yet to get any information on why this happens, but this is you in some arthurial form. Um, I've actually seen some YouTubers that thought this was a ghost that would visit them every night and they just press E because that's what you do to get through this this screen is you press E I've ran around in arthurial form trying to figure out if there's any use for it because that is actually you um, and there doesn't seem to be any use for this form right now in the game that I can see uh, but the game has you press E every night to to make that go away. Alright, I want this tree out of the way. It's annoying. So we're gonna get rid of it. We're gonna actually put two wood choppers on it because it the efficient way to chop down a tree is to use two wood choppers. One will not completely chop down the tree. <clears throat> and we're gonna go back up here to the stuff we were mining. And we might as well start using our our other one, which is Red Red Moon. Is there something underneath here? That's a flower petal. 
And there, we've used up our mana now. So that's happening. Now, we we needed to make a firm furnace. That's what our next quest is. So come over here to the workbench, grab the furnace. We do have plenty of stone right now. And hit this arrow. Now, this part completely confused me the first time I did it. When you're crafting something, it takes the period of this yellow bar disappearing for this to be crafted. The first time I did this, I tried getting on this table. I tried everything there was. I pressed, kept spamming E here, space bar, whatever, to try to pick up the furnace. Because I thought I had crafted the furnace. Um, it's a very logical reaction. You, you believe that the furnace is done. You... But no, um, this workbench crafts stuff over time. It doesn't craft stuff instantly. So you have to wait for the furnace to finish crafting. And that will confuse people in the beginning. It definitely confused me. So again, all this stuff in the way here just press E on it and you'll pick it up. E is the key that picks stuff up manually but there's some stuff that you can't pick up. Now remember I was talking about the stone the, the stone you're told um, takes stuff at night the, the stone that you're kind of uh, warned about like it's this evil thing it's not an evil thing it's it's the save point but uh, yeah so in order to save the game this is the first time I've ever actually saved my game mind you is in this video as I'm doing this tutorial for you I could not for the life of me figure out how to save this game it took me watching other videos to figure this piece of knowledge out to get on this stupid stone, you have to press E. There is no jump key. I did not jump on it. I pressed E to activate the stone, which made me look like I jumped on it. And then I have the option to save the game. This stone's a good thing, not a bad thing. Don't hide from the stone like I did in my first playthroughs because I was told the stone is bad. Stay away from it. It's evil. And I didn't go near the stone. I had no idea the stone was a place to save the game. And it's the only place to save the game, people. So if you quit your game and you didn't stand on this stone to save it, <laughs> well, you didn't save your game. <clears throat> All right, we've 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 leveled up in harvesting. And we got the furnace. And now another thing pops up here. And we talk to it. A lot of different skills make up witchery. Let's see how you care with fishing. Catch a fish, you'll need a rod, a lure and bait. The type of lure you have will determine what water you can fish in. So, you're thinking right now, oh, fishing. Easy peasy, not a problem. I'll just walk over here to the workbench and I'll make a fishing pole. No, you won't make a fishing pole. That option is not at the workbench. You have to buy a fishing pole. What? Where do I buy a fishing pole? There's vendors in the game? Yeah, there's vendors in the game. So before we do that, I'm just going to quickly uh, grab me a couple more runes and gold. Because I'm going to need money. This is a copper chunk, so we are going to mine that. 
with the mining spell, which we already have selected, so all we have to do is press on that little icon, and Viola, we will start mining it. Now, flower petals. Again, we know what flower petals do, so remember to use your flower petals. Um, you can't actually scroll wheel here unless you deactivate the spell, because that makes complete sense. So, you know, uh, scroll wheel onto the flower petals, press space to eat the flower petal. Eat yourselves, you know, a few flower petals, then click back down here and press mine on that one. What is that? Oh, that's a bramble mushroom. Okay, that's actually something you'll need. Remember what that was. That is a bramble mushroom. It does not always show up here on your on your farm. Um, your farm has different things that show up. Um, when you start out the game it's it's kind of procedurally generated so you could have a, a bramble mushroom like I just did or you probably won't have a bramble mushroom like I just did excuse me but that's what they look like and that will be useful going forward here in this video as we head into town uh, we will be asked to find a bramble mushroom and we will have already done that so that's a woohoo! Yay! We we accomplished something. And because I have future vision, I know we've accomplished something. All right. I'm just trying to collect some of this copper to make some quote unquote copper bars. Now we're going to go to the furnace. We made a furnace, right? So we're going to place that furnace down. We're going to open up our inventory. We're going to take uh, one of these things out of the inventory slot. We're going to put the furnace into it. Then we're going to scroll wheel onto the furnace. We're going to press the space bar, and that brings up the furnace icon so we can place it somewhere. Now, once you place something anywhere, you can walk up to it and double left click to pick it up again. That's right. You can pick something up after it's been placed. Just double left click on it. Now we're going to place it back down again. We're going to go in here to the furnace. We're going to throw the coal in here. The first thing we want to get made is the gold crumble. Uh, because the gold crumble will turn into gold bars. And we want the copper crumble to be making something. And the copper ore to be making something. All right. So now we have some bars being spat out. So I got some gold crumble from mining that uh, copper node there. It's not just copper that you get from them. Okay, they've all been mined out. Well, as mined as the first level of my mining pick will do on them. I only casted the spell on those one time. Alright, and let's throw that little bit of cop copper crumble in there and that little bit more gold crumble in there. And we have two gem fragments. I didn't notice that. That's good. So gem fragments, these runes. These items are high value items. A uh, copper bar isn't a, that high of a value item. I'm hoping to get a gold bar. I got a gold bar. Good. Gold bars are down here. Yeah. Just 
stone, ash, I, I still don't know what ash does. I assume it's something useful. We will figure out, we will finish up these couple of copper crumbles. And then we're going to go sleep, and then we're going to head into town for the first time. On the way into town, I'm going to show you a couple of of hidden things. Um, well, I don't know how hidden they are, but they're definitely things you could walk past if you weren't paying attention. Which will help you uh, developing your character a lot. Alright, so that's done. Up to the treehouse we go to sleep. And then our Earthreal form shows up for some damn reason, so we're going to have to press E to then finish our sleep. And then off we go. So now we're heading into town for the first time. We still are stuck on the fishing quest, right? So in order to get through the fishing quest, you need items for fishing. <clears throat> you can talk to this, but you don't have the money to afford to claim the herb pack, so there's no point. Um, you get to this thing here and you press E and you clear the weeds out from, a, from it. Press E again and it rewards you with that icon thingy, which increases your magical ability. And it also teaches you a spell. You get the capture spell, which allows you to capture these chimera things. If you manage to stumble across a chimera, you can now capture it because you know the spell. Now, what may or may not be apparent is that there's a pathway here. Yes, this is kind of hidden, and one could easily walk past it if they didn't know it was here. Go over here, press E, press E again, and you will learn another spell and increase your magical ability again. This time you learn Seed Praise, which is all green. <laughs> Excuse me. Now, the next step we're going to do is an introduction to fighting slimes. As we go on here, we're going to come across a slime. You just simply click on it, then you press the number 2. The number 2 tells your your uh, chimera to use its special ability to attack the slime. So again, uh, left click with mouse to bring up sword, press the number 2, and your chimera then attacks the slime. Uh, and that's that's fighting. Um, there is another way to fight, and you yourself can cast a spell, but that uses up your mana. Why use up your mana when your Chimera can kill the thing for you and not spend mana? Um, in order to attack the thing yourself, I think you have to press the Z key, the Z key, and it will cast an active spell yourself. All right, now we're in town. Um, we're going to go in here real fast because we picked up that bramble mushroom. In here is the head witch. This is the, this is the guild hall for the witches guild. And this is Haley. You can talk to Haley, or Harpy, sorry. I'm Harpy. Welcome to the witches guild. Feel free to visit the, uh, to use the elevator and head witch Coco is just up those stairs. Right. 
so up these stairs you can get over here to head witch Coco and when you talk to her she's going to tell you how she loves Sierra juice and the, to go get her one and know she's just kidding and then she's gonna give you your first quest and then that's gonna be to find this bramble mushroom what were we talking about no matter if you do find a bramble shroom please bring me one off you go well, guess what? I have a bramble mushroom. Come back here. Hello, Cupcake. Watch out for the goblins. They've been spotted in the forest. Task. Oh, you have brought me a bramble shroom? Yes. Excellent. Here's 125 copper. So, now you're not completely broke. And now she's going to tell you to go get her a super slime. That's the next task she gives you. And she also told you to go up this elevator and talk to the guy on the third floor. Um, we're going to skip the battle room. The battle room has no point. There's a DPS meter there. Um, so you could cast your active spell on the DPS meter and it will tell you how much damage per second you're doing. And that just wastes your mana and there's no point. There's nothing other than that there. Um, so this dude is who she wants you to come talk to and I'm showing you where this dude is because he is somewhat important in that he's the place that you go to buy spells so we're gonna enter the shop and we're gonna look at these spells these spells are not cheap you can buy the tomb of woodcutting level two from him we already have one we can buy number three from him mining number two from him mining number three from him Nurture, which is evidently to help a plant grow, and uh, Plant Harvest, to, to harvest crops. So these are spells that you can buy from him. Uh, you can get the wa magic watering can. If you didn't start with the magic watering can like I advised, you can buy it from here, from him here for one gold. Colorful Feathers. Um you can buy here for whatever reason a dark candle um, uh, a mana globe which gets you more mana I believe and a broomstick now we're still stuck on the fishing quest remember so we are gonna that's where we're heading next is to show you where to get the items, well, two of the items needed for fishing. So if we come down yonder this way, and we see that building that's right in front of us here? This is the building, the shop that we need to go to but you have to walk all the way around because it's up on a hillside here and the only way to get up on the hillside is to go this way and in you go and so the reason I crafted some golden bars before coming here is to use um, as basically uh, so walk up to him press E these are dark times. Watch your back out there, lady. And here's the shop. Now we're going to sell gold bars to him. Um, the gold bars are 200 copper apiece. So it's going to take five gold bars. One, two, three, four, five to get up to the one gold and change that we need in order to buy the fishing pole so right click on the fishing pole it goes into your inventory and the lure right click on the lure it goes into your inventory now you have the fishing rod and the lure but you don't have bait that's right you don't have bait you have fishing rod and fishing pole or fishing lure but no bait
So if you go down here, and this is a lot of mucking around to do, let me tell you. You're leaving town. You're going past the bar. This is a tavern-like thing. And you're going to end up having to face some mean, angry bees. Just run away. You press 2 and wait for your, your trusty... Uh, Chimera to kill him for you. And so there's another B. Highlight on it. Press the number 2. And yeah. Chimera kills it for you. There's some mushrooms over here you can grab. Spotty mushrooms. Now, if you make it to this place, you're doing well. And there's a save stone here. Um, right. So you can save up your game here if you need to. Might as well pick up these stones because you could get a L rune or non rune or whatever rune from them. Though it's more likely that than not that you're going to get the runes from the the square quartz looking ones. So jump up here by pressing E. That's the square quartz looking ones. This is the ones you're more likely to get runes from. <coughs> so we're saving the game once again. This is the second time I've saved the game. You're with me to see my second save game. Yay! <clears throat> and we'll grab this one. There we are. Is this anything? Can I turn this on? No. Alright. Um, I'm going to tell you about this little bald-headed guy over here, because he's actually important. This bald-headed guy is going to tell you a story. I was nabbing some seeds in the forest when a damn carrion bird stole my hat. And I'm as now I'm as bald as a troll. So, what does that mean? That's basically him hinting to you that he wants to get his hat back. And if he gets his hat back... This guy has a shop, and in his shop, he sells bait, which is the third thing you need for fishing. So, save his hat, he returns to his shop, and you can then buy bait from him. Okay, so that's the third element you need for fishing. You get by finding that guy's hat. Now we're going to come over here because, no, this is not where I wanted to show you guys. It's right down here below me through this break in the fence that I want to show you. There is a lumber camp down, or a farm. A farm or a lumber camp? This is the lumber camp. All right. So this is a lumber camp where you can chop, chop, get to work, blah, blah, right, right. Where you can come down here, pick up some logs, again, if you talk to these things, they're going to try to sell you stuff, like you can get some logs for two gold which is far too expensive no way and you can get you can claim a tree hat for this stuff no thank you but anyway there's this this uh, item here where you can take your timber stick it in here like so 
and it'll do its thing and it'll spit out lumber for you. So there you are, hard planks. These are different than than planks. These are hard planks. So that's how you can acquire hard planks. Um I told you about that guy uh, sending you to these birds to get his hat. The same birds will drop an item known as bird's nest. And to get to these birds, you have to go this way. And you have to fight through uh, slimes and bees and go up several screens that way uh, to get to the birds. It's a bit of a a slog, if you will, to get there. And we're running out of daylight, so we're not going to do that right now. I'm just going to only tell you about it verbally. I'm not actually going to show you it in this episode to try to save time. But to get the bird's nest, which you're going to need to build the thing called a bird house, which is a thing that keeps the birds from eating your seeds when you plant a garden. Without that birdhouse, the birds are just going to continually eat your seeds and totally piss you off. That's why I haven't planted anything yet, is because there's no point. There's no point to planting anything yet, because you do not have a birdhouse. Now you can talk to this dog. You can pet the dog. Um, he gets all happy with you. Yay. Um, you can run up here, you can grab this shovel, which this shovel is a key item. It's not an actual shovel, it didn't go in your inventory, it's actually a key. And key items are discovered by either pressing the middle mouse button to bring up the radio menu, or pressing K on the keyboard. So middle mouse button, key, now I have this shovel that is good for digging. I could click on the ground here. Well, I'm supposed to be able to click on the ground here. Uh, I might not own this ground. Um, somewhere over here there should be a rope, right? Where's the rope? Uh, where is the rope? These aren't mine. thought the rope was at the farm. Um, I thought there was supposed to be a rope there. And a rope is something you'll need to get places. It'll be called your trusty rope. Um, maybe it spawns there sometimes, maybe it doesn't. Not sure on that. Anyway, we need to start heading back towards the house. Or is the rope in the tavern? Might be in the tavern. I think there's a reason to come in this tavern. Don't exactly remember why. Who's this dude? We aren't all murderers and thieves. <coughs> you aren't, huh? Okay, so I just got some gold from running over those jars, which I guess is something. So the next part of this video I'm going to show you the mechanics of fishing and the mechanics of planting. Oh, is the rope over here? No. 
No. I forget where the rope is. Anyway, it's not that important. When you make birds fly away like that, sometimes they drop seeds. Which is kind of ironic. One of the ways you can get various seeds is by putting seeds down in the ground to attract birds to your seeds so that you can then scare them away to get different seeds. Feels kind of counterproductive to me, to be honest. But yeah, you can do that if you want it. Alright, we're going to sleep until morning, and we're going to go through the very last parts of this tips and tricks tutorial video to help you with this very frustrating game. <coughs> Alright, we're going to start off with the fishing. Just get up here to a water source, open up your inventory, uh, make sure that you have the fishing pole in your in your heart bar, and you also have uh, the lure here in your hot bar. Then select your fishing pole, and like everything, press space, and then click out here to throw the line. Now you can move, right now I can move this thing 10 spaces, that's what the 10 means. So what you're doing is you're trying to find a place where there's bubbles, and bubbles signify fish. Like that. There's, there's bubbles over here, so there's fish there. So you move your thing up here, and then you get your finger ready on the space bar, because this is a timing thing. As soon as you see hit, you want to press the space bar fast. Sometimes this takes a while. Some time. Okay, I've pressed the space bar, and now I've caught me seaweed. So seaweed is what you get 99.9% .9 of the time if you don't have bait. I've heard story that you can catch bait the same way, um, and if you catch your own bait, you can then use it to catch an actual fish. I've not confirmed this, and I'm not about to catch 99 seaweed to get the one opportunity to catch a bait so that I can actually catch a fish. Um, the, the way you catch the fish is, as I said, that bald guy we talked to before whose hat is missing, he actually sells bait, and you have to go rescue his hat in order to get bait. So I've now demonstrated how to fish, and that's fishing. Um, you, you actually need bait to catch the fish. I'm not going to go rescue his hat in this episode. I don't, I, I want to keep this, this, uh, video somewhat short and concise. In doing so, we'll lengthen this video dramatically. Now, we are going to plant a seed. And I'm going to show you what I'm talking about, uh, how these evil birds can completely wreck your, your, uh, where are we here? Where's the dry dirt? There it is. So put the dry soil into your hot bar. Um, we'll just plant, we'll plant coin petal seeds for now. 
So then use your scroll wheel to get to the dry dirt. Once you're on the dry dirt, press the space bar to activate the dry dirt. And then you see how it's green? If it's too close to you, you can't place it. But if it's far enough away, you can place it. So just place it down. There you are. And you see what's happening here? See how my dirt is becoming wet dirt? I haven't even planted any seeds on it yet. That is because I have my magic watering can equipped. If I remove it from being equipped and I place some more dirt down, like how about there, 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 there. The hell? I removed it from being equipped, didn't I? I did. What's going on here? This this must be a bug of some sort. Um, it's not actually turning brown, as you can see. Uh, yeah, that's a bug. Uh, the, you shouldn't be seeing this icon there. But as you can see, it's not actually becoming dark brown. If I put my magic watering can back into my hands... Look everything all of a sudden magically turns brown. So that's how the watering can works. Now to plant a seed, you select the seed. I don't want to plant coin petals. I want to plant something less valuable. How about poppy? Poppy's perfect. There we go. So press the space to activate the seed. Put the seed down. Put the seed down. Put the seed down. Put the seed down. The seed down. Now you have seeds that are planted. Um, no, okay. Now we're going to walk over here. Right? We're just going to take a walk over here. And we're going to walk back to our freshly planted seeds. Well, the game wants to make a liar out of me right now. What do we have sitting there? We have birds sitting there. These birds are the bane of existence. They don't go away. They're always they're always screwing with your with your seed all the time. They, they it's, they're they're 100% guaranteed to come wreck your garden. These these four seeds, if I was to but plant 12 seeds, for instance, and I was just to not watch my garden, just water it like you would in Stardew Valley without a scarecrow or anything up. In Stardew Valley, you might lose about three seeds out of 12, maybe, if, if you're unlucky. In this game, by the time the crops grow, you will lose every single seed. The birds will not allow anything to grow. So you have to have a birdhouse. And you're saying, a birdhouse? Don't you mean a scarecrow? No, I mean a birdhouse. The scarecrow is useless. It does not scare birds away. The scarecrow is for scaring crows away. And I'm yet to see a crow actually attack the crops in this game. At all. Ever. So don't waste your time building a scarecrow. Building a scarecrow is pointless. Oh, and I do have one more very important thing to talk about. And that is the collection of one of the most important resources in the game that's a pain in the butt to get, and that's flora fiber. I got one flora fiber from that thing there. You're going to need tons and tons of flora fiber in order to get... Uh, in order to get silk and silk is needed for just about everything so this is a growing flora fiber plant you can try to pick it right now as it is and you're rolling the dice you might get a flora fiber you might not you're better off letting that grow up to full height 
so that it gets to be like, do I have any full height ones available? <clears throat> This, this, these green things floating here are experience bulbs. You want to make sure you pick up your experience. All right, I'm not finding any more of these, these wild plants, to demonstrate getting plant fiber that way. Supposedly, there's one other way to get plant fiber that I have not tried to date. But somebody just told me about this on the forum. Whether or not this is true, this is my first attempt at trying. I have not actually tried it before. Take said shovel, dig grass, and you get flora fiber. Sons of a beeswax, it works. So here's, here's a very valuable tip. This shovel is so important because this is such an easier way to get a hold of this plant fiber by digging up these quote unquote uh, grass pieces to get plant fiber. This is way easier than picking the tall uh, plants that grow periodically here on your property. You you have no idea how how much easier this makes uh, collecting plant fiber. This is amazingly easier. Now with that being said I want to try to dig the regular ground. Um, you're supposedly able to dig up normal ground. There, I dug a ground. And there, I dug a ground. Um, that will get you dry dirt. Digging the ground like that will yield dry dirt. If you don't have the mining spell, this spell here, to get dry dirt off of these, you can get the shovel and you can dig up these tiles in order to get the dry dirt that way. Um, so if you didn't start with the mining uh, spell and you didn't, um, the mining spell is expensive. You can go get the shovel and you can get a hold of dry dirt this way. Um, what else is there to go over? Um, as you can see I'm not picking this up right now because my inventory is actually full. Uh, we'll solve the inventory issues real fast. That should be really self, uh, should be rather apparent how to fix an inventory problem. Build a chest, right? So, I can build a big chest here, and I'm going to build a big chest here. And, again, that's going to take time. When the time happens, the chest will be done. I'll pop the chest down. I'll free up my inventory spaces and everything will be hunky-dory. In the meantime, I could probably maybe get rid of some gold crumble here to be able to pick up that coal. Do I have any copper crumble or anything like that? No. And I do actually have a chest right here that's already here. You start off with a chest that you could use to to throw some stuff in and I'll probably throw the runes and these gem fragments in here because they're very valuable. Probably the copper and the gold bars. <clears throat> All right, and we'll run up here, grab the coal, and we'll call this, I think we'll call this an episode. So we've gone over fishing, how to fish, how to get bait. We haven't actually gotten bait, but I've explained to you the concept. Um, how to plant. Uh, we don't have a birdhouse yet. We have to build a birdhouse here, and in order to bird, build a birdhouse here, 
you need to get a bird's nest off of one of those same uh, birds that you need to get the hat off of for the guy who gets who sells you the fishing bait. So those birds will drop the bird's nest to get the to be able to build a bird's house so that you can plant seeds without having the birds destroy your garden and so that you can unlock the NPC that will sell you actual bait so you can actually fish. I'm not actually demonstrating those things in this because that takes more time. Otherwise, I have shown you how to use the shovel to dig up plant fiber. I've shown you how to use the shovel to dig up dry dirt if you don't have the mining spell. I've shown you how to use your chimera to kill slimes and other things, bees. I've shown you how to save your game. I've shown you how to get out of the house. I've shown you how to that the uh, workbench builds stuff over time, not instantly. I've shown you um, quite a few things. Hopefully this video will help with all of the uh, the times that this game makes you want to sl slam your head against the wall. Hopefully if you've been googling YouTube videos trying to figure out how to fish, trying to figure out how to uh, build a birdhouse, trying to figure out, I don't know, whatever you might be trying to figure out, how to, how to plant something. I mean, there's all kinds of things in this game that just aren't readily apparent. And hopefully this video has gone over the how-to's that you need to do in order to actually enjoy this game or actually be able to enjoy this game enough uh, after your initial introduction that you've made it far enough into this game that you'll want to continue to play the game more and learn what else the game has to offer. Um, so if I've gotten you through the initial frustrating introduction points of this game, and there's a lot of them, please leave a like and subscribe and leave a comment. I, I'd love to hear that this video helped you. Uh, anyway, I'm James Johnson, a.k.a. Software Blade. This is my content. Hopefully you're enjoying it. If so, please leave a like and subscribe. And until the next time, all, peace.